Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome to the show. I'm Jose Cruz from the San Diego Council on Literacy. You're listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio. And uh, boy, what is today? Today in actuality is March 27th. Oh my goodness, 2020. We're right in the middle. Is it the 26th? Got it. All right. And uh, we are yeah, in the middle of a uh, uh, very rare time. So we're uh, actually looking to generate more information to, uh, to help our educators do the work that, that they're doing out there. And, man, there's some stuff that is so cutting edge. We're happy to, to have with us today uh, Jessica Barron. She is the founder and executive director of Guitars and Ukes in the Classroom. Jessica, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jose. Thank you for inviting me on. I'm so glad you're on. I'm just looking at your, um, my goodness, your training and achievements, publications. Oh, you have a section here called Teaching from the Heart. I, and I want to give people some background about you. Uh, and there's a, and, and influences and such. And, and it's, I think it's important, because, and you tell me you know, if I, I'm reading this right, but it's important for people to understand that you're, you have an uh, immense background uh, in early childhood and human development uh, work, uh, you're a specialist in that area, a music educator, author, and a songwriter, and, of course, the founder of the organization. Um, a lot of folks just think, hey, man, just go straight to it. It's about reading and writing and phonics and such, and you're advocating for a particular approach to, to teaching, uh, not just reading, but, um, you know, other things that, that help help people think and function and some folks are like, well, that's kind of touchy-feely. What do you say about that? Well, I think that the science backs it up. You know, if you look a little bit about how our brains work, there isn't just one little box in the brain that's for reading, because reading is about a lot of things. Um, it's as much about listening and acquiring components of language auditorily and then being able to produce them verbally. And it's tricky business. So music is um, kind of a, a, it's a connector. It brings all these functions together, and it can just ease the entire process. So I think if we look at language acquisition as a whole and reading as a part of that and music as um, kind of a, a modality for acquiring those skills, then we've got a chance at really using everything we've got to learn how to do these things. Wonderful. So, well, so here's the thing. Now, you've been doing this for a while. Well, I'm going to guess that this is not a new thing, that there's some history, uh, I mean, how far back, that says, you know, when I, when I hear music or when I play music, you know, I, I learn better, I'm able to process better. How far back does this mm -hmm. uh, idea go? I think it probably goes back to the beginning of human communication, to be honest. I don't know there was, that there was ever a time where, as a species, we were developing that we didn't express ourselves with what could be called music, right? I mean, right. if you think about what is music, it's an organization of sound. It's bringing pitches and rhythms together. And any time a human being verbally or vocally expresses a feeling to, to another creature, you know, if you're, you're out loud about it, it's going to have personality. It's going to have melody and contour. So I think it's as, as old as we are, and it may be older. It could be that the animals were doing this before there were, you know, human beings walking around on the planet. Yeah, so, so, and yeah. anybody that grew up in a kindergarten that had a teacher that sang to them knew mm. they might not have known why it was working, mm -hmm. but they knew that they should use songs to teach, and, and any language teacher is probably already doing that. And tonality is, in a sense, it's musical. So how you say things, how you express them, also also helps to helps with the intake. Is that a good way of saying it? Mm -hmm. Very good. And you say uh, yeah. songs carry language. What do you mean by that? Well, music is its own language. So let's start with that, right? Okay. Music is an organization of beats and beat patterns that we would call rhythms. And melody, that means sounds that are higher or lower, and they are going in a certain order. So 
so we call those sounds a melodic contour. You know, as if you were if you were driving along a highway and looking out to your left, like you were driving to Yuma, and you looked to your left and you saw the the all the um, the mountains, the hills, and the mountains, and you were running your hand along the top of that ridge visually as you drove along, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So that's that's a contour, and the contour goes higher and lower, and that's what pitches do. So, for instance, if you're asking a question, the melodic contour is going to end with sounds that go up. So why don't you ask me a question, and we'll listen to your pitch. Okay. Oh, oh. Uh, what is... Oh, man, it's something that simple. Uh, what What is the weather like where you are? What is the weather like where you are? Yeah, now, try that. that with your hand. I did. Right? Your hand goes <laughs> yeah. higher up when yeah. your voice goes to a higher pitch. In, in, what yeah. is the weather yeah, like? Would, yes. And I did that naturally, what actually. What is the le- weather like? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. So if you turn that into music, you've got da-da-da-da-da-da, da-da-da-da-da-da. Make it a little more tuneful, and you've got da-da-da-da-da-da. Yes. Do you see the connection? I just did a little song. Yes. No, I do see it. I do see mm-hmm. it we, when we talk in tonality. And when people don't, we notice it. And it, and it puts us mm-hmm. to sleep, I think, sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it, if we want to develop expressive language skills, either understanding them so we understand the inferences and what people are saying to us, or using pitch to put our inferences across to other people, we're really using the musical part of our brain at the same time as we're using the receptive and productive language centers in the brain. It's really pretty cool. And it's it's not anything we think about. I mean, we're doing. I'm doing it right now. We do it all the time, and, and so mm-hmm. uh, you put a, a special emphasis on it. I, I, I'm reminded of a quote, and tell me what your response is to it. Let me. See, I want to make sure I get this right. We decorate space with art. We decorate time with music. How do you like that? That's pretty profound stuff, Jose. That's good. I liked it. I remembered it. <laughs> and so you did and, remember it. Yeah. And, and so I'm trying to remember who said that, but I really did like it. That that you know, there's um, there's um, the physical the physical um, m- uh, makeup of things and decoration of things, and then there's there's the whole the whole soundtrack of our existence. Um, just the sounds mm-hmm. that we're making daily and all that. And so you incorporate that into instruction. Um, and maybe so folks can understand in a, in a uh, more practical way, what, what, are, what are some of the things that, that you do? Um, what, are, what are some basic things that you do that, that take advantage of, of what we're already doing as, as part of speech and, and music? Okay. Well, um, the work that we do with guitars and ukes in the classroom is about teaching literacy and learning through music. So music is the way that kids engage, and they learn to sing and move and play percussion and play ukuleles or guitars, sometimes both. And we accomplish that by training their teachers and their paraprofessionals and the specialists who work in the schools. So whether you're an occupational therapist or a librarian or classroom teacher or resource teacher or you're working in... um, mod severe special ed, whatever you're doing, um, you're welcome to come to our classes, and we also welcome school staff. So you could be working in the principal's office uh, with her, or whatever you're doing, there's a place for you in our programs, and our programs are offered at no charge. Right now we're teaching online, um, but normally when schools are open, we're out there in the schools after school every single day teach training teachers in groups, and then we're doing these teaching artist residencies uh, in highly engaged classrooms with teachers who took a class and said, I want to get really good at running this by myself. And, um, you know, so and, it's our job to raise the money to support all of that. And, right, and, and let's, let's talk about that too. So are you seeing more and more traditional educators who are, who are coming to you and saying, look, I get this and I want to be trained in how to use this with my, with my lessons? Every day, yeah. We train approximately 1,400 teachers a year, and those trainings are ongoing. So it's not just a drive-by experience or a drive-through experience. It's a, it's a drive-in experience. You're staying for the whole thing. So some teachers stay with us for several years. And a lot of teachers come to us without any musical background at all. 
They've never played um, an instrument, and they don't think they sound very good when they sing. Most of them are afraid that they're singing out of tune, and that's okay, Mm -hmm. because how else can you learn, right? And we make it really, uh, really stress-free. Wonderful. Um, I I don't want to get you into a deep uh, explanation of things, because we're going to take a break in about a minute. But I'm just remembering as I sit here uh, being in elementary school and just really appreciating um, my teachers um, who who uh, who knew how to play. There was this little it wasn't a guitar. Maybe you could tell me what it was, but had strings on it that one of my teachers would play. And there was little um, I want to say sliding things that she would use to adjust the Tony. So she would play that and we would sing songs. And that was my I want to say that was my. my fourth grade teacher, and then I had one who also played piano. But they, they had these talents, and they, you know, they they used them, maybe not to teach us. Maybe they did. Maybe I didn't realize that. But just you know, the teachers mm-hmm. having the talents that they have already, and then being able to play an instrument. And then we had, uh, of course, we had uh, my sixth grade teacher who made us all sing. We always said, "Oh, they're making us sing," uh, but we loved it. And so it was a good thing. So I want to come back to to all of that. Oh, that's um, great. You know, and so we're talking to uh, uh, Jess Barron. She's the founder, executive director of the Guitars and Ukes in the Classroom program, and we're going to learn learn a bit of, uh, more from her about uh, the activities and such. So, um, let's see. I'm not listening to our. I'm not hearing our music. Oh, there it is. And uh, we'll be back. You've been listening to the Literacy for All Radio Show on WS Radio, the worldwide leader in internet talk. baby in need? Sometimes the blessing of birth becomes complicated and perilous. Miracle Babies is there to help. Miracle Babies helps moms and dads give their all to their struggling little baby, but still need more. When you give to Miracle Babies, you help them give more. More skin-to-skin care, breast milk, and love. Go to MiracleBabies.org and give right now. Be their miracle. Looking to be a successful entrepreneur? The virtual assistant industry continues to be a top choice for those looking to start their own business. The problem can be how to become a virtual assistant. Many turn to the Bible of the VA industry, the book, Virtual Assistant, the series, and it's the perfect guide for office managers, executive assistants, and other administrative professionals looking to make the transition from employee to successful business owner. Go to vatheseries.com to get your copy today. Small businesses are the lifeblood of America's economy. Every Thursday, SBA Radio interviews industry professionals and is dedicated to provide small businesses with timely insights and innovations. Visit www.sbaradio.us for details. Homeless veterans and their families are suffering and need our support, but many won't ask or don't know that help is within reach. Veterans Community Services is here to help. Amazingly, about 35% of the homeless in our neighborhoods are veterans with families. Low-income veterans or their friends are encouraged to contact Veterans Community Services and reach out for help with housing and other services. Call now, 800-974-9909. I raised $8,000 to build schools for South African children. After realizing how many people go hungry in San Diego, I now volunteer at a food pantry. I'm spending the next year doing volunteer projects across three countries and helping in ways they designate to be the most helpful. The World Link program at the Joan B. Kroc Institute for Peace and Justice recognizes the potential of youth as agents of social change. Learn how you can help youth become a generation of leaders in action at peace.sandiego.edu. Can you imagine a world without children? A world where children don't play, or dream, or imagine. At St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, we're working every day to find cures for diseases that strike down children. Because we can't imagine a world without children. Can you? Finding cures, saving children. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. To learn how you can help, log on to our website, stjude.org. 
Donate cash, furniture, clothes, and other gently used household items to Father Joe's Villages and get a nice tax break in April. Every donation is tax deductible. Believe you can make a difference. Be Father Joe. Go to neighborhood.org or call 1-800-HOMELESS to donate today. Talk, talk to me. WSRadio.com The San Diego Council on Literacy brings you Literacy for All with your host, Jose Cruz. Welcome back to the show. I'm Jose Cruz. This is the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio. We are uh, talking to Jessica Bear, and she is the founder, executive director of Guitars and Ukes. Ukes? Ukes? How do we say that in the classroom? Either way. Well, if you're if you're observing Hawaiian tradition, it's an ukulele. Ukulele. And if you are not, you can call it a uke. But the Hawaiians sure like it when you pronounce their language well. Right, and it's not that hard. So we've just gotten used to myself, especially saying it a, a certain way. Um, let's yeah. see. I don't want to get too far away from things. I'm going to ask you about a word that you used when you and I talked before the show. Then I'm going to ask you about things that are. Uh, best practices activities for, for our listeners, things they can be doing, and then how to get in touch with you so they can access uh, your your experience and and uh, and just what what you bring to to um, the edu- the big education table. Um, so with that, what did I say I was going to do first? <laughs> audiation, audiation. What is the meaning of it? Audiation is great. It's an it's actually a pretty simple idea for a fancy word, it means you're hearing music in your head. It's not outside of you. You're not listening to the radio. You're not playing an MP3. Nobody's standing in the living room singing it to you. You hear it, therefore you own it. It's a part of your own brain process. And if you can audiate music, you've internalized it, and you're hearing the elements of music in your mind. And that's separate than whether you can produce the music. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right? These are two different parts of the brain. Right. And so um, what does it mean to... Um, uh, you hear it, you feel it, um, you visualize? Do you visualize the sound? Do you associate... It depends on if you you're know? a visual thinker. Okay. Maybe if you're a trained musician, you might see notes or you might see some sort of visual representation in your head. Um, But you might be more of a color person, and you might see colors in your mind when you're singing that song, or images of what the music reminds you of. Or you might just be totally consumed with the sound of it. So, so, and all of this helps us with processing, uh, remembering, uh, uh, associating sounds, uh, using sound, to uh, to uh, I want to say internalize uh, ideas or let's say uh, in reading um, you're mm-hmm. you may be well, one I mean yes we we sing but that doesn't mean we read uh, but with music um, you're reinforcing sound are you reinforcing associating the sound with the symbol and uh, and and with words and I think the answer is yes. Okay, well, in the way that Guitars in the Classroom, and that's our short name, is Gitsy is our nickname. We can just call it Gitsy. Mm-hmm. It's a little easier. Um, the way that we teach at Gitsy, this is a kinesthetic process. So, in other words, kids are learning to clap their hands, stamp their feet, strum ukuleles. There's a very physical side to learning the music. And that's an important thing, especially with young children, because it engages their whole body. And visual representation of music we use in a very light way that's developmentally synced up with kids being able to interpret abstract symbols, right? That comes, usually for kids, that comes a little later. Uh Being able to hear and say and play music is much more immediate for little guys. And then we can use some very basic symbolic representation but that's a secondary system, and if you look at the history of where writing down notes came from, it was actually just a convenience for people who were 
they were composers themselves, but they had to write down their ideas in order to teach them to other people, especially because they would go and give a lesson and then they would leave and they had to leave something behind. And people in our culture um, accidentally mistake that for being talented or being a musician, and it isn't. Right. A lot of great musicians don't read music and don't write music. Well, I understood the but, Beatles. Wow, the Beatles didn't know how to read music. and create. Yeah, I understood the Beatles didn't know how to to read or write music. They, I mean, they knew how to write music. They just didn't know how to compose, as in write down or dictation. I guess you would say. And that's actually very normal, you know. Be, having the opportunity to study music and learn how to write it down is something that. Um, it depends on whether we have it in public education. If it's funded, if our schools have the money to do that, then we learn to read and write music the way we learn to read and write any language. But, for instance, in San Diego Unified, we don't have enough money from, for elementary music. And so really our, our best accomplishment so far, and kudos to our VAPA department and to Russ Sperling and his team uh, at San Diego Unified, we have music in grades four, five, and high school, all the way up to you know, middle school and high school. So kids are now having options they did not have before. Mm -hmm. um, but back in the day when music was fully funded, music started in kindergarten, right? Kids right. went once a week or twice a week. And mm -hmm. so there's just a huge effort to resurrect elementary music, um, but with limited dollars and not enough advocacy that that whole very important developmental time where learning music could actually be helping our kids learn language as well and learn math is sadly neglected. And it's an area where we need parents to get up and go to the school board and advocate and not be afraid to say, hey, my kid deserves music. I want music for every child. Wow. Um, you know, and, and there's just kind of we let, we let things slip away from us. And so there's, it's good to have the advocacy out there because you need the resources to do the work, um, to put the music into mm, play. And, you know, we haven't done it as, as we used to do. And so when you're coming into play, that is when you're engaged with a school or a classroom, is that the norm or is that someone saying, hey, I know about this, I know, I've heard of guitars in the classroom, let's bring them in. Are you inundated? Do you have a lot mm -hmm. of help? Do the schools uh, need more funding? Is more advocacy needed, and like I say, how busy are you? That's a big question. Um, well, first of all, if anybody wants to learn more about advocating for music and music education, you can go to nam.org. That's the Nam Foundation, N A M M, dot org, and um, look for your re uh, resources to support music. If you remember the word support music, and you look for that on the site. And we'll put it on our Facebook page today after the interview, um, which is just facebook.com uh, and forward slash guitars in the classroom. So you can get really good advocacy tools for yourselves if you'd like to Wonderful. like to take that step, and I would encourage you to do so. We always need more help, um, but the people that we hire are specifically trained as classroom teachers. Most of my faculty are certificated uh, we have faculty all over the United States. Uh, our program is based in San Diego, and our biggest programs are here in Southern California, in San Diego Unified and L.A. Unified. But we have programs as far away as West Virginia, North Carolina, Washington State, up north. Um, so this is not just a little tiny thing, uh, just for our kids in our schools here. Um, and uh, so people that are interested can visit us at the website and get in touch. But um, everything is funded through grants and individual contributions. Wow. We barely ever charge the schools. Most schools don't have budget. Um, we're really happy when they chip in, but they do pay for our free teaching space. They, they waive all of the fees, and they promote our classes to their teachers. So there's a really good partnership. Wonderful. Now, you mentioned the, the NAM website. Uh, what, is, what is your website? How do people get in touch with you? Super easy. Just uh, look for Guitars in the Classroom. And we're up there, guitarsintheclassroom.org. Very good. And, um, golly, I'm trying to think what to, to ask last. Uh, maybe one activity, we have about two minutes left, one activity that you would uh, ask the, uh, the average ter uh, teacher to put into play in the course of instruction. Let's say school's back in because right now there's no school due to the virus. 
uh, which is why we need your your services, your talents more than than ever. More ideas maybe for the parents who are listening. What is one thing that, that folks can be doing at, at home or at school? I would be happy to share that. I'll go one better, which is that our sponsors at jamplay.com, J-A-M-P-L-A-Y.com. This is a music instruction site specific to guitar and bass guitar, have made our community welcome with free three-month memberships for any um, anybody whose kids are out of school. You can sign your kids up for free guitar classes, or if you're working in the schools in some way and you're affiliated with our work, um, free memberships on there, which is just incredibly generous of them. We have free online classes going on every single day, so if you go to our website and you click on our programs page, you'll see who's teaching when, and we would welcome you into our classes so you can learn more about how to do this work. And I'll leave you with a quick activity, which is pretty fun, and ask you all to do this at home. You're going to clap your hands to what we call the steady beat. It might just be the pace of your feet as you walk. So, for instance, mine would sound like this. These are nice, even beats. They're spaced evenly apart. And then over that beat, say your name. So I'm going to play around with Jose's name and with my name. Okay, we got about 20 seconds. And we're going to make a little rhythm pattern over that, okay? Okay, 20 seconds. So, So this is what it's going to sound like. Jess, Jess, Jose, Jose. Jess, Jess, Jose, Jose. And the end of that would be to add a melody to it. So my, my name might be Jess, Jess, Jose, Jose. Very Jess, good. Jess, Jessica, Jose. I have to cut you off. We need to spend an hour with you, and we're going to do that in the future. Thank you for joining us, and we'll have you back. Uh, you've been listening to the Literacy for All radio show on WS Radio, the worldwide leader in the Internet talk. Nowadays, Internet devices are an integral part of your home. Everyone in your family has a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. Life is easier knowing that all your devices are secured and your family can surf the Internet carefree. ESET Multi-Device Security Pack does just that. One license for all your devices. With ESET, it's simple to stay protected and save money. Enjoy safer technology with ESET Multi-Device Security Pack at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T dot com. On the Internet, your business's reputation can be unjustly destroyed in an instant. Don't wait for that to happen. Building and marketing your five-star reputation can increase your business by as much as 19%. Take control of your reputation and have the five-star reputation you deserve with Reputation Marketing Solutions by DSI Development. Become the go-to company by visiting 5starrepmarketing.com. The number 5starrepmarketing.com. Hey, it's Catherine from Listen Local Radio. Moe's Guitars has proudly served the San Diego music community since 1975. Specializing in guitars, basses, mandolins, banjos, and ukuleles, they buy, sell, trade, and consign. If you're looking for lessons, repairs, accessories, and cool gear, you found the right place. Located in downtown La Mesa Village, stop by and check out their digs or visit moesguitars.com or their Facebook page, mozeguitars.com, 619-698-1185. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com. Nowadays, Internet devices are an integral part of your home. Everyone in your family has a smartphone, tablet, or a computer. Life is easier knowing that all your devices are secured and your family can surf the Internet carefree. ESET Multi-Device Security Pack does just that. One license for all your devices. With ESET, it's simple to stay protected and save money. Enjoy safer technology with ESET Multi-Device Security Pack at ESET.com. That's E-S-E-T dot com. Tired of presentations with no impact, no inspiration, and no traction? Do dull speakers have you and your team disengaged and distracted by smartphones? Christopher McAuliffe brings energy, insights, and two decades of experience delivered with punch, humor, and heart. Your team will leave energized, uplifted, and with a sense of purpose. 
Visit ChristopherMcAuliffe.com to bring some heat to your next speaking engagement. M-C-A-U-L-I-F-F-E. ChristopherMcAuliffe.com.